The next part of this chapter is about locating the optimal point, be it a minimum point or a maximum point. So there are two methods in order to solve these problems or locate these points. They are called the ruler method and vertex testing, or point testing. So example five looks like this. I'm using this just to say time will draw it out. So it says Nigel is making ice cream for a charity for a charity fair. He makes two flavours of ice cream, vanilla and chocolate. X is the number of litres of vanilla and Y is the number of litres of chocolate. He uses a linear programme problem to determine the litres of each type of ice cream we should make, the constraints and the feasible region are illustrated in the diagram. So what we did in the last example is actually um, used his constraints to create this graph. And we're now going to use this graph to work out um, to work out the uh, ideal ideal optimal points. Now you might be asked, what's the mean of this line here? Well, it's all equal to because it's a bold line. We're below it, so this line underneath here means y has to be less than or equal to x. So x has to be bigger than y, it means that you need to make more x, which is vanilla, than chocolate. Um, this x is 13, needs to, means it needs to make less than 13 litres of um, vanilla. Okay, so the actual objective, we've got two objectives to look at a, a is to maximise p, which presumably is profit, it is profit, equal to 2x plus y. And we need to draw that objective line on. The problem is, we need more information. In order to draw a straight line, we're going to need this to be equal to a number. Well, the simple solution is, you make it equal to whatever number you like. What you should do though, is make it equal to a number that is a multiple of these two numbers. So it's 2x plus 1y. So we need to pick a number a multiple of two multiple ones at any even number. So say for example I picked, I don't know, six. If I pick six, using the cover-up method that we looked at in the previous example, when y is zero, two x is six, so x is three. When x is zero, y is six. So we need a line that goes six on the y-axis to three on the x-axis. And that's why you should pick a number that's a multiple of these two numbers. That way it's going to be crossing um, integer values on your x and y axes. Now ideally what you want to do is pick an objective line that's a bit closer to the feasible region. So what if I double both of these? x is 6, y is 12, y is 12, x is 6. What about if I um, just went up another stage? So 3, 6, 9, 6, 12, 18, 18 to 9. And that'll give us a nice line. Well, we can do all of them actually. So x is 6, y is 12. x is 18, y is 9. And you can have a series of these objective lines running through the graph. And what you'll notice is that all they all have the same gradient. You only need to draw one, but you can draw more than one if you wish, but you must remember to label it. So this is the objective line for P. You can write the equation out if you like. And what you should do here is take your ruler, pass it through the feasible region, keeping that gradient the same. The first point you hit will be a minimum solution. The last point you hit will be a maximum solution. So because this question was maximized, it was fairly obvious it was gonna be this point here. I mean, it could have been dependent on your line. No, I don't see how it could be any other point. How could you make the last point you hit? No, it's gonna be that point there. So that's the max point. Now, if you've drawn your graph accurately, in this case it was drawn for me, very often you can read the solution off. 
So in this case, the maximum point is x is 13. Well, we knew that anyway, because it's on the line, x equals 13. Go across, y equals 13. Again, that makes sense because it's also on the line, y equals x. So if x is 13, y is 13. So that's saying if he wants to maximise the profit on the sales from the ice cream, he should make 13 litres of vanilla, 13 litres of chocolate. Remember, x is vanilla, y is chocolate. And so A, max point is 13, 13. So we should make 13 litres of vanilla, 13 litres of chalk. And his max profit would be when we put these values into the equation. So it would be 2 times 13 plus 1 times 13, which is 39 pounds. Right, we've got a second solution, or a second part of this question rather. This time we want to minimise c equal to 5x plus 2y. We're going to use the exact same method to solve it. Now a common error here is students go 5 on the x-axis, 2 on the y-axis, which would be completely wrong. 5 on the y-axis, 2 on the x-axis, that's a line like this. What you actually need to do is pick a number that's a multiple of both of these numbers, say for example 20. So if, if um, we make 5x plus 2y is 20, cover up the y when y is 0 along the x-axis, 5x is 20, x equals 4. Cover up the x, x equals 0 along the y-axis, 2y is 20, y is 10. So we're going to go for 10 on the y-axis, to four on the x-axis. So if we would have done it the incorrect way, um, so x is five, y is two, x is five, y equals two, you can see you've got a completely different gradient. It's completely wrong. That's a very, very common error. If I double both of these, that'll take me to 20 and eight. It's just a bit close to the feasible region. But you can see that it's exactly the same gradient. So this is objective for C. So we run our ruler through into the feasible region and out. And because it's minimised, it's the first point that you hit. And again, it's blindly obvious what it's going to be. It's that point there. It could be if you add, if well, if we did the wrong way, y is two, x is five then we'd probably hit this point first, giving us completely the wrong answer. So you need to be really careful. So this is minimum point for, um, was it C? This one is gonna be a decimal solution. Now what we're gonna to need to do here is solve uh, these two equations simultaneously. So this point is where the intersection of 3x plus 5y is 60 and y equals x. So y equals x and 3x plus 5y equals 60. And we're just going to use a method of substitution. So x is y, y is x. So 3y plus 5y is 60. 8y equals 60. So y is 60 over 8, which is 30 over 4 which is um, 7.5. It's on the line y equals x, if x is 7.5, y is 7.5, or if y is 7.5, x is 7.5. So the min point for c is 7.5, 7.5, so that's 7.5 litres of vanilla, 7.5 litres of choc, the minimum C equals, put into this equation, you've got 5 lots of 7.5 plus 2 lots of 7.5, which is actually 7 lots of 7.5, which is what, 53.5 I think, 53 pounds 50. Which hopefully isn't the case, because his minimum cost is 53 pounds 50 and the maximum sale is 39 pounds, so not a good model really. Okay. So example six.
says use the peaceful region determined by the inequalities x is bigger than or equal to 2 4x plus 3y is less than or equal to 12 2y is less than or equal to x which I'm going to change to y is less than or equal to half x and x and y are bigger than 0 it's got the non-negative course in the first quadrant ok so I need to draw the graph of that so again, it hasn't given us a scale, but if we just look at the graph, if we use the cover up method on this one, so this is, um, if we use cover up method there, we're going to have x is 3, y is 4, so I'm going to need to go at least 4 on the y axis, and um, 3 on the x axis, and we'll go 4, 4, any more than that, mm, 2, no, so let's just use those as axes. A nice big graph. So we'll go four, three, two, one, zero, one, two, three, four. So don't draw, draw tiny little graphs because we might need to draw, use the graphs to work out exact solutions. So firstly, x is bigger than or equal to 2. So x equals lines go through the x-axis and our vertical lines. It's a bold line. x is bigger than 2, to the right of 2. Just do a little bit of shade into the left. Uh, 4x plus 3 y equals 12. So x is 3. Y is 4. Bold line. So we only need to look at the positive Y and the inequality. So Y is less than. Y is smaller than. Y is below. Just to show you. So already we've narrowed down the feasible region to just this triangle. Y is less than or equal to half x, so plus zero. So the intercept on the y axis is zero. Gradient is a half, so it's one up, two to the right. So one up, two to the right. would be here. Go through the origin. It's a bold line. You can obviously also plot points to wherever left you like. Y is less than, Y is below, shade above. So it just cuts a little bit of the triangle off. So I've got a um, trapezium shape solution there. Oh, well, not a trapezium, sorry. Quite casual. And that's all the, all the um, constraints. Same one must be above the x-axis, so I'll just close down that region and call it R. We're then told in A to maximise P equal to 2x plus y. So I need to make that equal to something that both 2 and 1 go into. So I could do 2, I could do 4, let's just do 2. So I'll make it equal to 2, cover up the x, y equals 2 cover up the y, 2x is 2, so x is 1. So my objective line will go through y is 2 and x equals 1. So this is the objective for p equals 2x plus y. And we want to maximise, so it's going to be the last point you hit when you run the ruler through the graph. The last point of the feasible region. So no, 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 bingo. So max P is 3, 0. 
So x equals 3, y equals 0. Max p is uh, what's equal to 2x plus y. So it's 2x plus 0, which is 6. Okay, b. says to maximise p equal to x plus 2y. So using the same as before, make it equal to 2, but this time cover up the x axis 0, 2y is 2, so y is 1, cover up the y, x y 0, x equals 2. The way around, so y is 1, x equals 2. That's the objective x plus 2y equals p. Um, it's another maximise, so we run our ruler through our feasible region to the last point that you hit, which is here. Again, I'm going to need to use to solve this using simultaneous equations. This slide here was 4x plus 3y equals 12. It's where it meets this line here, which was y equals 1.5x. So if I, um, this one's going to be a bit more awkward, unfortunately. If I times that by 3, 3y is 4.5x, and substitute that as for here, I get 4x plus 4.5x equals 12, 8.5x equals 12, double it to get rid of the decimal, 17x equals 24, x equals 24 over 17, which is what, 1 and 7, 7, 17. Um, 4x plus 3y equals 12, y equals, uh, y equal, oh no, sorry, I've done that wrong. Y doesn't equal one half x, y equals a half x. So, 3y is 1.5x. So, it's 4x plus 1.5x equals 12. 5.5x equals 12, 11x equals 24, x equals 24 over 11. 2 and 2, 11. 11 is 24 over 11. And um, y equals a half x, so y is half of that, so 24 11 is half of that is 12 11. So max p is. 24 elevenths, 12 elevenths, p is x plus 2y, 24 elevenths again, which is 48 elevenths. Now, that might not be a valid solution because very often in these decision questions you're making something, you can't have decimals, so you couldn't make 24 elevenths of something, it might be such a solution we'll deal with those later. So on to example 7. Here we've got those constraints and the objective is to minimise c equal to 3x plus 2y. So I need to draw each of these lines onto this graph. Notice or equal to on all of them so they're all going to be bold lines. So the first one, 3x plus y is 90. So when x is 0, y is 90. When y is 0, x is 30. Let's go 90 on the y-axis to 30 on the x-axis. Just put a little 1 by it to remind us the first line. 2x plus 7y is 140 and cover up the x. So 7y is 140, so y is 20. 2x is 140, so 1x is 70. So 70 on the x. 20 on the y. X plus y is 50, y is 50, x is 50, so 50, 50. Max 
this nice little to do. Okay, so first objective, and obviously we're to the right of the works, it's called the x-axis from this one. All of them are what is greater than, what is greater than, what is greater than. So we're going to be above all of the lines. Let me show you below all of them. That will give us this open-ended feasible region R over here. So first objective line is if I, I could make this equal to 6, but then you're going to have Y is 3 and X is 2, which is a tiny one, so let's make it 60, in which case X would be 20, Y would be 30. So I'm going to say X is 20, Y is 30. If I doubled them, X is 40, Y is 60. It's really close to this. Into the, it doesn't matter if you go into the visible region, which is just advisable not to. Let's just stick with this one so it's easier to see on the graph. So x is 20, y is 30. So that's a minimum RSC equal to 3x plus 2y. That's the objective line. Try to minimise, it's the first point that we're going to hit this one here. Um, so I'll just put a little A by it for its part A. So that's where the first line meets the third line. So I've got x plus y equals 50 and 3x plus y equals 90. So if I Simply subtract them, you get 2x equals 40, x equals 20, uh, y equals 30. So here you can see why you need to draw them accurately because it's actually 20, 30, but it doesn't quite look like it on my graph, so I didn't draw it accurately enough. It's meant to be here, 20, 30. So that means the optimal point is 20, 30. So C equals 3 times 20, 3x plus 2y, y is 30. That's going to be 60 plus 60, which is 120. Okay, B. This time it wants us to minimise C equals 3x plus 7y. So we're going to need to make that equal to some that. I could make it 21, but then you're going to have really small values. So let's make it 210 for now, and that'll be x is 70, y equals 30, 30 to 70. Now, a slight problem with that objective. Well, it's not really a problem, but you can see it's going to go into the feasible region. So I want the first point this line hits. So I need to go backwards this time. So the first point it will hit is this one here. And that's where line three meets line two. So line two was, so we've got two x plus seven y is 140. And again, it's x plus y is 50. If I double all of that, two x plus two y is 100. Now subtract 5y equals 40, so y equals 8. And if y equals 8, um, it's on the line, x plus y is 50. So if y is 8, x is 42. Check see if that makes sense. Is 42 8 look about right? Yeah, it does. So 42, 42, 8. C equals 3 times 42. Plus 7 times 8, so 126 plus 56, so 182. Right, example 8 says to use the same graph, but 
with the objective to minimize c equals x plus y. Well, you can make that equal to anything. So x plus y equals 10. So you're going to be x is 10, y is 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40. If I just draw 40, 40 on. And we want the minimum point. The problem here is you can see it's parallel to this line x plus y equals 50. So the solution is going to be anywhere along that line between those two points. So anywhere from x is 20 to y equals, sorry, I'll say that was 42 or something. Um, so anywhere between those two points, anywhere along that line is going to give you a solution, a minimal solution. So on to example 9, which uses what's called point testing or vertex testing to find the optimal points rather than using a um, ruler method. So to want to minimize uh, x plus 3y, subject to these one, two, three, four constraints. Uh, I've already drawn the axes, so let's do these ones first. Y equals five. So that's a horizontal line going through the wax of five, because it's Y is five. Let's see if you prove that one. And Y is greater than, Y is above it. So we just show it below. Then we have X is less than 13. So let's draw X equals 13 first. And you can see it points to the left, to the left of 13, so we show it to the right. Um, y is less than x, so we need to draw y equals x. So when x is 2, y is 2, when x is 4, y is 4, when x is 6, y is 6. So you've just got this diagonal line. They're all or equal to, so if I to do that, y is less than, y is smaller than, y is below, so shade above. And we've got 3x plus 5y is 60, so when x is 0, 5y is 60, so y is 12. Because of the y, y is 0 on the x-axis, 3x is 60, so x equals 20. centimeter mu for the decision exam. Then just looking at the y, positive y and the inequality, y is greater than, y is above, so we show it below. So you've got that feasible region there. Now I'm going to label each of the points A, B, C, D. And I'm going to put those points into a table. So vertex of point A, B, C, D. And what's um, A is going to be, well, Y is X, what's this line here? 3X plus 7Y, 3X, what's in this line there? Was 3X plus 5Y equals 60, so X equals Y, so 8Y equals 60. So y is seven and a half, so it's gonna be seven and a half, seven and a half. And it looked about that from my neatly drawn graph. D, you can read that straight from the graph, it's when x equals 13, y equals 13. C is when x equals 13 and y equals five. D, Y is 5, okay, I need to do some work on that one. Y is 5 meets 3x plus 5y equals 60. So y is 5, 5y five is 25. So 3x equals 35, x equals 35 over 3. Draw 
on the one two thirds. Thirty five over three. So the objective, the objective is to minimise c equals x, oh, I don't know what c is, well, it's just x plus 3y. So this is x, this is y. So I've got 7.5 plus 3, that's 7.54, that's 7.5 or 30. x plus 3y, so I've got 13 plus 3, that's 13, which is 4, that's 13, which is 52. Here I've got 13 plus 15, which is 28. Here I've got 35 over 3 plus 5, 3 for 15, which is what? Um, 45 over 3, which is what, 80 over 3, which is what? 26 and 2 thirds. The objective is to minimise. So which of those is the minimum value? Well, this one here. So this is the minimum point. X is 35 thirds, 35 thirds, Y is 5. That's the minimum value. So you see it's quite quick um, vertex method, providing you can read a lot of the points off the graph. Now I'm not going to bother with example 10. Example 10 is exactly the same, except in your points that you're given, you're actually given five points. You have to use simultaneous equations on all the points. So you have to use simultaneous equations to work out that, 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 that. It just takes absolutely ages. You'd normally expect on a question, if you're doing point testing, vertex testing, you may have to use simultaneous equations once or twice. The rest of the points you should be able to read off the graph. So that's all the examples I'm going to do up to exercise 6C. So have a go at that one. And also have a look at example 10. Just look through it to make sure you understand it.